William Hill, the home of betting. Let's kick off with the supreme, then the roar of the crowd, and who's going to come home in front? Well, I think there's some juice, basically, in Willie Mullins' second and third string. Let's start with the market leaders, Irving. I'm still not convinced, despite the fact he's done nothing but win, that the hill is going to be all that much to his liking. And around about nine to four, I could even go shorter. It's a bit skinny to find that out. Vator, of course, is Ruby Walsh's choice. Came good last time, but he got the run of it, got a slightly easy lead. Negative vibes for him. However, that now leads us to Wicklow Bray. Paul Townend's going to be on him. As long as he provides his jumping gets better on this decent surface, which there's got to be a massive chance it will, he'll eat up the hill. This is going to go really, really close, around about seven or eight to one at the moment, the each way play of the race. Mullins also has Val Salido, a horse that came onto my radar last November. My anti-post wager has somehow made it to this race and Brian Cooper has been talking this one up. He's riding him in the preview night. So in the first race, it's Wicklow Brave and a saver on Val Salido. Get us off to a flyer. The best horse in the Arkle. Well, this is a race that has been confounding me all season. Would it be Trifolium? Don't quite think he's good enough. Would it be Dodging Bullets? Worried about his attitude until Champagne Fever went and galloped publicly at Leopardstown a couple of Sundays back. How impressive was that? He's very likely to get his own way out in front and he can do a Bobsworth in winning the bumper and the Supreme, and now the Arkle. So it's Champagne Fever all in on him. Coming down to the final flight, Hurricane Fly, O'Connor put in a tremendous jump on the near side. Time for the big one then, the champion hurdle. And there's five, aren't there, that it's really difficult to keep them out of the frame. But I've been with him throughout his career and I see no reason to desert the Hurricane at this time. If any horse is going to be a 10-year-old and win, it's going to be him. He's miles clear of the rest. So you've got to strongly believe or be certain that our Connor is going to improve that much for coming back to Cheltenham or that the new one's going to be peak after his layoff. And my tent or yours, slight injury worries there. So we're going for the Hurricane to really bring the house down. On to the Mayor's race and it is Quavega going for the sixth time. A can she do it? Break the record. She's miles clear of the rest of these fillies, and it's all about Quavega this. She's bound to be prime and strong vibes for her. Then we go to the National Hunt Chase. Time for the amateurs to get their hour in the sun. And the one I like here, I've been punting him out for months. It's Fox Rock, ridden by the trainer's daughter, Katie Walsh. She's won the race before. He's gonna stay all day this, and he's got a bit of class about him. Could he be a next year type gold cup horse? I think so. 